Well, I'm surprised. I thought it would be like uh, Harold Washington that an ambulance would pull up someday and just take him out of City Hall like his father. I thought he would stay there until he passed away. Uh, I think that uh, a lot of this has to do probably with Maggie because that family is very close, as you know. And uh, he, he was a very, very interesting politician. He, uh, I can tell you a story of when uh, he and Harold Washington were running for mayor of the city of Chicago. And it would start with Mayor Washington, who used to live at the old, old Del Prado Hotel on the south side in Hyde Park. And he walked out one morning and he walked over and he sat on a boulder and he was lo lo looking out at the lake and I was taking photos from behind him. And he said, uh, Phil, you know I really love this city. And the day after election I was sent by the Tribune down to uh, see what I could find out at Richie Daly's house. And I got there and nothing was going on and I heard a, a rake going in the backyard. And uh, I looked over the fence and Richie was out there raking leaves. And he looked over and he saw me and he motioned for me to come in through the gate. And he offered me a cup of coffee and he sat down and he looked at me and he said, Phil, you know I really love this city. And I thought, it, I, I believe that both men really loved the city. I know that uh, the political machine in Chicago gets a lot of bad press and uh, there's been a lot of corruption. And I, uh, obviously that's wrong and that's not how we should run government. But I do think that uh, Richie Daly really loved the city of Chicago, just like his dad. I, uh, I think it was probably time for him to go, he felt, and he left, and that's to his credit. Phil, you've been, you were up, you were in Chicago for quite a long time, but you've been down here in southern Illinois for quite a number of years now also. Mm -hmm. Can you talk um, about the, how the different areas view the mayor, and whether, you know, from your personal experience with him, uh, which one is more, more right on? I think there's a misconception in both places. Uh, if you uh, if you talk to people in Chicago about uh, you know downstate Illinois, they think that's Kankakee. They don't uh, they don't really uh, and part of that I would say is the state's fault because of a, a lack of promotion of uh, of Southern Illinois and uh, what it has to offer. But I think that uh, the misunderstanding comes from Chicago gets everything tax-wise, and uh, it's taken away from Southern Illinois, when in effect, if you really check, like aid to the, you know, this, this, that the schools get in Chicago and things like that, on a per capita basis, it's the same as what they get in Southern Illinois. And Chicago has home rule, which is, uh, allows them to tax and they make up some of the difference. Down here, we don't. But it's uh, an interesting, uh, it's interesting how it's perceived. I remember one year there were two Democrats running and they lived in Chicago, and uh, I, uh, one, one was, uh, one of them was uh, just running for the House of Representatives, and one for the Senate. And the two Republican candidates lived in DuPage County, and they were actually closer mile-wise than the candidates in Chicago. So that misconception, everything is lumped together here. It's uh, they think when uh, you say Chicago that's uh, the city, but it's really not. It, it's the suburbs and everything are totally separate from the city, and they don't understand that. People in Chicago think that so, without uh, what they're paying into the tax coffers and everything, that Southern Illinois probably wouldn't even have roads. So I, you know, it, it's a lack of, of, uh, of understanding, and it's, uh, most Democrats that are elected come from Chicago, and, and most Republicans come from downstate, so it really splits along party lines. You covered quite a number of politicians when you were with the Tribune. Yes. Anyone from Jim Edgar to Jesse Jackson, and he, of course the, the mayors of the city of Chicago. Well, I, I hate to say it goes back before Jim Edgar, but uh, it uh, includes the Thompson years, and before the Thompson years, a little bit of Dan Walker. And uh, even back, I guess, uh, oh, Dan Walker was probably the first one I covered the most. Well, what, what made uh, 
Mayor Daley stand out from all the politicians you've covered? Well, he was a he was definitely a politician, but he was uh, less likely to uh, to do the politically correct thing. And certainly, when he was talking, he always didn't say the politically correct thing. He would. Uh, People laughed about the way he talked, but he would say what's on his mind more often than not and and take the consequences for that later. Where Jim Thompson was a very polished politician and very seldom would say anything uh, that would uh, get him in trouble. I remember Jim, I, I truly respect Jim Edgar, but I remember once flying on a plane from Springfield back to, uh, or from Springfield to Chicago and he asked me if I was going to vote for him and I said no because Don Nitsch was, uh, was telling the truth about the schools and Jim looked over at me and smiled and said, Phil, you have to get elected. So. Is that something that Mayor Daley would have done as well? No, Mayor Daley would have probably turned around and said, uh, Nitsch is right about the schools, and, uh, but that's the only thing she's right about. <laughs> that, would be, that would be Richie. He just, uh, uh, he, uh, he said what he thought most of the time. I, you know, can you, can you explain to those of us that have lived downstate all their lives, like people like me, um, you know, we've always heard the name Mayor Daley, but never really got to know him or, you know, lived within his uh, political area. Can you talk about what today's announcement that he's not going to run for re-election means to the city? Well, I know he moved out of Bridgeport, but it may be the first time in how many years that they, they haven't had someone with, uh, with tremendous political clout in the city of Chicago, uh, or at least came from, who came from there. Uh, it's the end of a dynasty when you talk about his father, and then Bill Daly, and then Richie, and I guess uh, it's an end of, uh, of an era for that family. I don't see anyone in the Daly clan who's going to step forward right now. I. Uh, the South Side Irish might be mourning. So. One last question before I run out of time here. If you were going to put one photo on the front page of the Tribune tomorrow that un with the headline of Mayor Daley not deciding to run for re-election, which one would you have picked? Well, obviously on page one you're going to run the photo where he announced it. Mm -hmm. But I think that uh, his concern for the uh, for the city and everything. My favorite photo of Daly was uh, was the was the morning after he lost to Harold Washington when he was sitting there. You'd run that photo again? I'd run that photo again because I think that uh, you could see in his face the uh, the true love that he had for the city of Chicago. And uh, he was his father's son in, in many ways. He, uh, you know, he loved being boss. He loved being uh, he loved being the uh, the man who made the decisions for the city. It's probably going to, I don't know, John Cass is going to have to find someone else to pick on now. But uh, John can do that. But Daly would go, I mean, even when there was a, this was a flood when they poked a hole in the Chicago River. Can you hold it up so we can uh, see it? In the Chicago River, and you can just look at the expression on his face and say, yeah. but there he was, and he was... Uh, he was on the scene and he was uh, making sure that everybody was doing what they were supposed to be doing even if they were patronage workers he was he was out there making sure so that you know that uh, that's something that I think uh, he will be remembered for in Chicago along with the black wrought iron fences that he, uh, he put up all over the city <laughs> made it hard for truck drivers to turn around and everything but, uh, Phil thanks for talking all right so.